Hey fanatics, have you ever wondered why no one is allowed to enter the second floor of Elvis Presley's mansion? It doesn't matter if you're a president or a high-ranking foreign official, nothing can gain you that upstairs access. This section of the house remains shrouded in secrecy since 1982, forever locked away. The question is, why? Does it tie to Elvis's connection to Satanism? Or is there something even more disturbing behind those closed doors? Welcome to Fame Fanatics. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop with the latest celebrity news. Now, Graceland isn't your run-off-the-mill tourist spot. It's practically a pilgrimage site for Elvis fans. In fact, a whopping half a million people swing by Graceland each year. And here's the thing, Graceland isn't just another house, it's practically a mini museum. You've got a couple of options when you visit. You can hop on one of their group tours and have a guide show you around. Or if you're feeling a bit more independent, you can take a self-guided tour with the help of an iPad. That's right technology meets history right here. As you wander through Graceland, you'll get to check out the beautiful mansion itself and let me tell you, it's a sight to behold. I mean, just look at it. And if you're into cars, you're in for a treat because you'll also get to feast your eyes on Elvis Presley's cherished collection of cars. The man had style, that's for sure. But here's where the mystery kicks in. The part that's not part of any tour, the mansion's second floor, the upstairs of Graceland is off limits to the public. So what secrets lie behind those closed doors? You see, the thing is, Graceland isn't just where the king lived, it's also where he was buried. According to People, after some not so fun attempts to snatch Elvis's body and a bunch of vandalism woos from his die-hard fans at Forest Hill Cemetery in Memphis, which was his first resting place, the the decision was made by Elvis's dad, Vernon, to move both Elvis and his mom, Gladys, to Graceland. Later, his dad and his grandma, Minnie Mae Presley, are also buried at Graceland. There is even a monument memory of Elvis's twin brother, Jesse, who was still born. And guess what? As of my last update, Elvis's daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, is slated to be laid to rest at Graceland alongside her son, Benjamin Keough. There is a ton of history packed into this mansion. But now, the million dollar question. Why on earth is the second floor of Forbidden Sloan? Well, here's a little history nugget that might surprise you. Graceland, the name that's forever linked with Elvis, wasn't originally his, and he definitely didn't coin the name either. Nope, it's not your usual Elvis trivia. This 14-acre wonderland was once part of a sprawling 500-acre property owned by the S.E. Tooth family, as mentioned on the Graceland website. And guess what? The mansion, the very heart of Graceland, was actually built back in 1939, long before Elvis made it his iconic home. So who was the brain behind the name Graceland? Well, that credit goes to one of the founding family members, and you don't need a detective's hat to figure out her first name. Before Elvis, the original owner of this mansion were Ruth Brown Moore and Dr. Thomas Moore. In their heyday, the Moore family was quite the talk of Memphis town and while they might not be the most famous folks to call Graceland home, they kickstarted a musical tradition here. Their daughter was a talented harpist in the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. Now, Elvis entered the Graceland picture fairly early in his career, back in 1957. And get this, he snagged the place for a cool $102,000, which if you adjust for inflation is like grabbing it for just under a million bucks today. Now, let's rewind a bit to the days leading up to Elvis's purchase of Graceland. The man was on fire. He'd been making waves with a string of successful television appearances and had record sales that were skyrocketing. It was clear he was on top of his game. So when Elvis signed the papers to make Graceland his own, he had a game plan. He was ready to make the leap from music to the big screen. In fact, production for his second movie, Loving You, was already in full swing. The guy was making moves both on and off stage. During his lifetime, Graceland wasn't just a big house, it was a place of memories. Elvis expanded the mansion from its original 10,000 square feet when he first bought it to a whopping 17,000 square feet. And here's the really cool part. It wasn't just Elvis's pad, it was a hub for countless friends and family members. Some of them even stayed in separate accommodations on the property. Presley's own personal haven was the second floor and that's where the mystery lies. Let's get to the heart of it then, Graceland's hidden second floor. 
After Elvis's passing in 1977 at the young age of 42 attributed to cardiac arrest with possible drug use as a contributing factor, Graceland eventually welcomed the public to its hollowed halls. Well, most of it anyway. According to people, from the moment the first tour group strolled through Graceland's doors in 1982, one section of the house remained shrouded in secrecy, forever locked away. And guess what? It didn't matter if you were a president or a high-ranking foreign official, no key could unlock this enigma. So what's the deal? The reason lies within Graceland's second floor, where Presley's master suite was tucked away. Even during the king's lifetime, this place was off-limits. It was one of the rare spots where the incredibly famous singer could enjoy some precious privacy and only those closest to him were granted entry. The second floor, a place hidden from the world, was Elvis's private sanctuary, and today it remains locked in time, leaving us all wondering about the secrets it might hold. You see, Elvis met his fate in the bathroom just off the master suite. And that's a major reason why practically no one outside of a select few is permitted access to that upper floor. The word on the street is that the interior of that space has remained untouched since the very moment Elvis took his last breath. The concern here is that if visitors were allowed up there, they might get a bit too fixated on the bathroom where Presley was found lifeless. It could overshadow the celebration of the singer's incredible life and career. And so that part of Graceland stays locked away. But here's an interesting twist in the tale. While almost everyone who's ever requested access to the second floor has been politely turned down, there was one notable exception. None other than Nicolas Cage, the actor and a huge Elvis fan, who was once married to Elvis's daughter, Lisa Marie. According to Express, Cage even counts Elvis as one of his heroes. During their marriage, he was given the rare privilege of glimpsing into the king's private refuge. One particular rumor that has circulated over the years suggests that Elvis might have had connections to Satanism. We gather in the Now, before you jump to conclusions, let's dive into this bit of historical speculation. You see, when Elvis burst in onto the public scene back in the early and mid-1950s, he was quite the sensation. But not everyone was singing his praises. Some conservative Americans of that era saw him as something of a devil incarnate shaking up the established norms of the time with his electrifying presence and rebellious spirit. So where does this rumor of Satanism come from? Well, it's possible that the seeds of such whispers were sown during those early days when Elvis was challenging the status quo. But what if, just what if, this perception had something to do with why that second floor remains off limits. Now, we can't say for certain if this rumor has it any weight, but it's one of those mysteries that add an extra layer of intrigue to Graceland's history. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video.